Here's how to make your own carbon fiber formula or GT3 style steering wheel. I'm making this for my Mazda MX-5 track car, but the wheel uses a standard bolt pattern that'll work for mostly any vehicle. As tempting as it might be to get right into laying carbon and getting all messy with epoxy, I, in fact, need to stop you for a moment because first, we're going to draw a bit of a design so that our end goal is clear. Naturally, that means going to Fusion 360 for some sketching and clicking on the computer to make up this, a formula wheel layout with some grips at either side. The 3D models I have here will all be available for free, again, link in the description. And yes, the observant of you would even notice a sequential shift light across the top of the wheel. If you want to see how I made the shift light to go with this setup, please see the video on my other channel, Tech Beaver, link in the description. Now, quick shout out to Bremi on Thingiverse for the inspiration in the design of the wheel. While I drew the wheel completely from scratch, I did leverage some ideas from Bremi's wheel design. With our design ready, it's time to build it. I'm going to be making a blank carbon plate with a wet layer of carbon fabric and epoxy. Or you could buy pre-made carbon sheets. A quick search in my area came up with a half meter square sheet costing around $350. I'm using a light 200 GSM twill. It's some spare cloth I've had for many years and used on various projects over time. Similarly, the epoxy resin I'm using is, as you can perhaps see, pretty old. But thankfully, it still cures okay. I've also got some blue PVA mold release, some brushes, rollers for applying the resin, plastic containers for mixing resin, and multiple layers of cloth. I've pre-cut the cloth into rectangles slightly larger than the part. I'm going to use these two layers of glass between which the carbon may be sandwiched. This helps to ensure a smooth, flat result. The glass is prepared by being cleaned and then the PVA is applied. The PVA ensures the epoxy doesn't stick to the glass and the carbon part may be removed once cured with a simple spray of water from a hose to dissolve the PVA. A few coats applied with a brush to each of the glass panels and we're ready for layup. Once we get into mixing the epoxy, we need to work within the cure time of the resin. The resin I have allows for a few hours of working time so I don't really need to rush, but I do need to be ready with everything prepared. The resin and its hardener are mixed by weight using a scale and then it must be stirred very well. In terms of volume, I just guessed how much resin I would need and I got lucky in that it was around the ideal amount, roughly 400 mils. On the glass mold, I've applied a grid of painter's tape to give me a guide on the space to work within. It just helps as I build up layers of carbon to ensure I keep within the lines. The epoxy and the carbon are built up like grandma's lasagna. Resin, cloth, resin, cloth, etc. As each sheet of carbon cloth is applied, it is also useful to use the metal roller to help soak the cloth and distribute the resin. Ideally, you want to mix the directions of the layers of cloth for best general strength. This is known as quasi-isotropic fiber orientation. In essence, don't make all the lines of the cloth go in the one direction. You want to make them go all over the place. With the last of the carbon and the resin down, I then set the second sheet of glass on top and I give it a firm press to try evacuate air. And you can see that as the pressure is applied, the resin is sort of squeezed and the air bubbles evacuate. There's still some air in the corners at the moment, but with the weight of some tools on top of the glass to leave it to cure overnight, they'll hopefully disappear. Fast forward to the next day and my brush that I was using to apply the resin is rock hard. So I think that means that things should be cured. We can go and safely remove the part from its glass sandwich. Removing the toolbox and the grinder that were keeping our carbon from running away overnight, the clear glass shows an even and smooth finish. Those air bubbles are indeed gone. Using the garden hose, spraying between the glass panes dissolves the PVA relatively easily. It doesn't take long before the first glass panel is separated from the carbon part. And with a little more water and a suggestive talking to, the part is free. The resulting surface is flat, smooth, and shiny with no obvious defects. 
With all that work, we have our blank carbon sheet from which we can cut our wheel. To help mark out the shape for cutting, I 3D printed a template from my sketch, but simply printing the design on some paper would work just as well. The shape can be traced, I'm using a white paint marker as it stands out on the carbon, but in hindsight, I should have instead covered the panel in some masking tape and could then easily have just used a pen, as this would also work to protect the surface from scratches while cutting with the jigsaw. Speaking of, the rough shape was cut out using a jigsaw. This is a tedious process and the carbon wrecks the jigsaw blades pretty quick. I then used the angle grinder with a sanding flap wheel to tidy up the shape and an air die grinder for those hard to reach places. Then the standard six bolt steering wheel bolt pattern is drilled with a drill press. Holes are five millimeters in diameter and they're at a 70 millimeter spacing. I should add the final thickness of the carbon panel worked out to five and a half millimeters. Doesn't sound that thick, but in the hand, it feels sufficiently substantial. Now with the, uh, in inverted commas, wheel complete, it's time to 3D print the grips that were part of the initial design. This will give the hands something more substantial to hold onto than the mere five millimeter carbon. A few hours on the printer, and these can simply be secured with some nuts and bolts. I should add, you could wrap these grips in some sort of suede or Alcantara type material to give them a more realistic and pleasant feel. Certainly something you would see in a real car, but the plastic actually works pretty fine, particularly if you're wearing gloves when you're driving. And with that, we have the fundamentals of a functional Formula or GT3 style steering wheel. Before we see this wheel on the car, remember if you like this sort of stuff, you may want to subscribe to the channel. I'm always doing weird and wacky things to my car. Now, while I do have an NRG quick release on my current OMP steering wheel, which naturally you would think would be cool if I could hot swap between different wheels, unfortunately, I don't have another matching mount to affix to the new wheel. So instead, for the sake of testing, I'll remove the NRG brand hub and swap to a no-named brand quick release to get this new wheel attached to the car quickly. Some six M5 bolts later and we're all bolted up to the car. And the new wheel can snap into place with its own quick release that I've attached to the wheel and it's feeling pretty good. To answer some of your questions before you ask them, am I worried about the strength of the carbon? Not really. At five millimeters thick, it's exceptionally strong. In fact, here's me trying to break a small cutoff in the vise. It took a huge amount of effort to snap. And this is a load that you would not see in normal use. What's it like to drive a normal car with this style of steering wheel? It's fine at the track. It's a little unusual when you need more than 180 degrees of lock, but that was only noticeable when driving in the pits. Otherwise, when on the track itself, I never need to move my hands away from the traditional nine and three positions. Would I recommend this on a road car? No way. Can I see this wheel actually being used? Sure, here's some in-car footage from a few weeks back. And last question, why did I make this? For fun, for the journey, and just to see if I could. And you can make one too. The 3D model is available to download for free. Links are in the description. Don't forget, if you want to see how I made the sequential shift light to go with this setup, please see the video on my other channel, Tech Beaver. Again, link in the description. Thanks for watching.